to another CAD Dimensions Tech Tip. My name is Jesse. This week I'm extraordinarily excited because you guys now have access to SOLIDWORKS Visualize. I've been really anticipating the release of this product, and if you guys came to our rollout events this year, you saw me jumping up and down and flapping my gums about it. Well, the product is now released, and I wanted to give you guys a running start on finding your way around. When we first open Visualize, we're prompted for a new project or to open a project. I'll just start a new one. Once the project is started, we have a default background environment that's set, and we're ready to import a model. To import a model, we can do so through the file dropdown. I use the shortcut Control i I'll browse to a SOLIDWORKS assembly and open it up. Once we double click on our file, we'll be prompted with some import settings. I found these to be pretty decent at defaults. I'll just say OK. Once the model is imported, we're ready to work with it, add or remove appearances, or move it around. Now as you can see, in this case, we have the appearances that have been brought over from SOLIDWORKS. However, it's partially beneath the floor. We'll fix this in just a moment, but let's take a look at the interface. The interface has two modes. There's an easy mode, and this is the advanced mode. If you hit the space bar on your keyboard, you'll see the interface switch over to the easy mode. From here, we have simple steps from getting from A to B, being a finished rendered product, and you can see the steps down here at the bottom. I do like this clean interface, but let's switch back just so you can see what options we have. On the display at the top, our first option is to choose how we want our image to be previewed. Visualize does allow rendering in real time, so we can choose to turn that off using the preview mode, set it to fast, which is what I currently have, or set it to accurate, which will give us a better image, but will take more time to produce. I tend to leave mine on the middle setting fast, so I can get a preview of the rendering as I'm working, and then switch it over to accurate once I have things dialed in. The next control allows us some filters for what we are selecting. From here you can see we can select the model, the part, the group, or the appearance. These are helpful in different scenarios. Typically I'll switch mine right over to model, at least in the beginning. The third icon is the object manipulation tool. This will allow you to move components around from within an assembly Next over is the camera tools. These I typically use the shortcuts, which we'll discuss in a moment. And finally, the output tools. This allows you to set your settings for how your rendering is going to turn out. We'll have more nitty gritty details in weeks to come, but for now, we'll just get you guys going. Now at the bottom of the screen, you can see some stats as to what's going on with the resolution. I have mine set fairly low in terms of final resolution, small number of passes, just so things move quickly as I'm working through them. You'll also notice that mine is currently set to hybrid mode, and I find this definitely produces the best results in terms of speed and accuracy. This allows Visualize to use both your CPU and your GPU, should your graphics card allow it. This does require a CUDA-enabled card. Now we see that my model is partially beneath the floor, but there's a quick fix for that. Given that I have my selection set to model, all I have to do is right-click on the model. You'll notice that the edges highlight in yellow, as the different selection modes are color-coded. From here, there's an option to snap to floor, and that will reset our model. That control is found from the model itself as well, but I find that the quickest way to do it. Let's take a look at the panes on the right-hand side. From here, we have similar icons that you'll see elsewhere in the interface. The far left is our model. Here's where you'll find the model tree, all of its components, and their properties. Again, from here, we can select directly, and you'll notice there is a snap to floor option. The next tab over contains the appearances that are currently in use. From here, we can select these and access their properties. I prefer to actually slide this out a little bit, which will allow a side-by-side -side pane. This gives me quick access to all of the appearances and quick access to their properties. Next over, you'll find the scenes, these are the scenes that you're currently using in your rendering. Again, we also have their controls side by side. Next over is the cameras. Again, you'll see saved cameras from within here. We can create and tweak settings from here. 
Last over is your libraries tab, and this gives us access to everything we would need to add. You can see in this view with a dragged out, we have the list of appearances. We also have their folders as well. There are two modes for appearances. You can use your local appearances or browse out to appearances on the web. And that toggle is up here in the top right. From here, you'll be able to download appearances as you need them. In this case, I wasn't particularly happy about how the plastic appearance on the top came through. So let's go in, we'll find a glass appearance and we'll take this solid glass and just drag it over onto that component. From there, you can see that changes its appearance and we'll now see in the appearances, solid glass show up as one of my applied appearances. You'll notice because I am selecting the appearance, the highlight shows in the appearance filter color. Now let's talk about manipulating the model. That's a little bit different from SolidWorks. Much of the manipulation is done using the Alt key. Now holding the Alt key down, if I use my left mouse button, that will perform a rotate. Now you can see it is re-rendering as I'm moving the image because I do have this set to fast or higher. Alt in the middle mouse button will allow you to pan. Alt in the right mouse button will allow you to zoom. I'm just moving my mouse up and down. We also have a neat option which will allow us to directly control the perspective that we're using, and that is Alt in the middle scroll wheel. From here, you can see I can adjust the perspective directly. I absolutely love this option, and it has definitely come in handy as I've been working through renderings using SolidWorks Visualize. While I'll admit these controls take a little bit of getting used to, they are very quick in getting dialed in exactly what you want. Let's say we want to add a little bit of depth of field. Remember that the Cameras tab has all of that information, Depth of Field being one of those options. Just like in PhotoView 360, we can check this on for the camera, and because we're using a what you see is what you get rendering, you see the impacts of that immediately. From here, we can manually change the focal distance. We can choose a location by using the eye, and we can adjust the aperture or the f-stop. The further we crank up the aperture, the shallower the depth of field. I hope this video gets you guys moving quicker and SolidWorks visualize, and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. If you have any questions or want to show me a cool rendering that you've created, please feel free to give me a call. And as always, I'll see you guys next week. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below. 